Hello there guys, it's Joey and this was a request. This is the Goddess Lilith Pagan Beads or Pagan Prayer Beads. And this follows the energy of the Goddess Lilith spell range which is on the store. And we'll talk about individual beads in a moment, but we'll talk about the overall theme in a minute. First, sorry. Okay. So, Goddess Lilith is a dark goddess, an oft misunderstood goddess, who walks those, who or walks with those, who speaks to those, who walk alone, along a path free from the confines of popular and unwanted opinion. She speaks of challenging preconceived notions to look beyond lies to see the truth. The energies contained within are for death, decay, rebirth, beauty from ugliness, strength from tragedy, <laughs> courage from pain, as well as regaining female sexuality and power. Also perfect for sensual, sexual, personal power and charismatic energy workings. So <laughs> Lilith is demonized in the Bible. It's believed by many that she was a pre-existing goddess and that the fact that she was created equal uh, to Adam and, and then shamed within, and demonized within the Bible is, is telling more of the patriarch, patriarchal retelling of something and actually she is a, a goddess who deals primarily in primordial female empowerment. In a modern sense uh, she's very separate she walks her own path and sort of opinion be damned. I think it's a, a feeling that we can all do with some of it, to be honest, in our lives. And she re knows what they say about her. And she carries on with strength and dignity irregardless. She is strength and empowerment and female sexuality blazoned and proud and true. She is beauty from ugliness. And I think there's a power in that, a deep power. So there are five different beads. Uh, the number five has this sort of dual correlation in my mind. On the one hand it's the five points of the star. It's the balance of all the elements. It's a wholeness, a completeness. And on the other hand, five in tarot, for example, represents conflicts to be overcome, fights to be won. And I think that numerology, that number, kind of really sums up the basic nature of how I feel about the energies of the goddess Lilith, that on the one hand um, she represents the conflict and having to overcome the conflict and to realise that we will be judged and um, will be harmed and people will darken us and try and, and, and belittle us and make out that we are something we're not and so on and so forth but on the other hand she's complete she's a goddess a goddess of love and sexuality firm in herself and, and doesn't need the approval that is so lacking from certain quarters because she's whole in and of herself so the charms I really really like um, They are sneaky snakes, which represents within the mythology of Lilith. There is that transformation, that shedding, that misjudgment. Again, snakes get the bad rap, bad reputation because of their presentation as being evil creatures. And snake medicine is powerful and transformative and healing. It's about shedding the skin even when it's difficult, and that for a lesson of, of Lilith is 
or any dark goddess is, is very apt. Within the heart, within the heart space can be the most difficult place to deal with transformation and these issues that are brought to bear because when we deal with being judged, when we deal with attack, when we deal with belittlement and so on and so forth, it's usually in the heart that it hurts the most and that's what requires the healing because on a head level we know it doesn't matter so much, you know, we know in the long run who we are, but there's sometimes no telling the heart that, so we have to heal in the heart space. Also, um, as the requestee pointed out, they look a little bit like a tr triqueta, the snake does, or a little bit like Ouroboros as well with the sort of the double loop, and so the infinity of time, the cycles of life. And then the actual beads, there are five. Um, I don't know whether or not we're going to be able to see the difference between one and the other. So there is, <coughs> I think, I think I did that one first. Yes, I did. And then you're the other one, right? Oh no, I did. Right, okay, I know which one I did first. Okay, so we have <coughs> Jet, Carnelian, Garnet, Rainbow Obsidian, and then Midnight Moonstone. <coughs> and as I said, I've already explained five, so I will get the meanings from the particular books. Let's get the Book of Stones out. <coughs> okay. You'll just have to forgive me while I find the different ones. So Jet is protection, purification and grounding and an earth element of, of the base of the root chakra. So that's a Jet. It is the activation of power of magic and the interaction with the force of all elements. I kind of, I actually chose these uh, empathically or sensitively or just with my own feelings, however you want to terminology it, and it actually worked out perfectly. Because Jet is an aid, a protector, raising one's sh shakati, 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 and allows a portion of that fiery energy to be consciously directed by the will. It draws on the earth energies and that powerful flow into one's desired directions. A neutralizer of negative energies, clearing one's energy field of all disharmonious vibrations. <clears throat> For anyone engaging in astral travel or spiritual mediumship, it's good to purify and protect the aura from negative influences. So it's kind of, it's really wonderful for transformation in the inner and outer world as well. Um, so basically it's a beginning, it's a root chakra type crystal. I mean, I think there's, there's a deep root chakra energy to most of the Lilith stuff because really it's a primal level energy goddess who deals with things that can affect us on a very primal level. Sexuality and things of that nature is uh, one of her key strides, I think, if, if that makes sense to people. I know what I mean by that, but I, I hope that comes across as what I mean. Um, so therefore the jet is kind of the activation, the beginning of transformation, the protector, the purifier, the fire in the belly, the fire in the loins, the beginning of transformation. And then we continue that with carnelian. <coughs> I'll get the meanings. I have a general, I obviously have a general knowledge of Carnelian, but I think it's probably best to go with what the book says. I'm feeling a bit off today. Again, uh, it's a root chakra crystal, but it works into the second and third, so into the sexual creative and the solar plexus. A stone of courage, vitality, sexuality, confidence, action, and fire. 
bringing the influx of life force, sexual and creative energies and assertive will. It is a powerful aid to those who wish to build confidence, courage, passion and power within themselves. It is great help to the gentle souls who wish for good things but have difficulty in making them happen. It's a powerful ally when one needs to take major action. It pr promotes courage to take the leap and dedicate oneself to the new path. can assist those who procrastinate or who are unable to decide on a course of action. It helps one to understand how to bring a concept into being, helpful for manifestation due to its ability to stimulate one into taking action towards one's goals. It strengthens and fortifies the body, enhancing the life flow, energy force and expression through physical vitality. confidence and power so it kind of, it's interesting how it actually kind of flows into the next chakra lines that's interesting to me um, you can maybe make arguments that they do flow all the way up um, I'll talk about that in a minute when, once we've talked about the whole all of the crystals so that then takes the root chakra energy from jet it moves it up with the root chakra into uh, the other two into the sexual creative and the solar plexus. So that's interesting, and it, it, it takes sort of the earth fire energies from jet and transmutes it into a fire energy. And uh, dark goddesses are nothing if not fiery, wouldn't you say? I would. I love fire, even when it burns. <sighs> So, garnet. <coughs> uh, garnet's another earth and root chakra. Um, some people make arguments that it can be heart chakra as well. Uh, it depends on the interpretation by the looks of it. Some people argue that only green chakra can be heart, but then other people argue that rhodolite and uh, al alumanite garnet, which are both red forms, uh, also can affect the heart chakra. I would say it could affect the heart chakra. So we'll say it carries on. It carries on up the chakra line. An earthy ancient crystal, reflecting when people were more intimately connected to the earth. Activating and strengthening the base chakra, the portal of connection to the earthly world. Perfect for those who are ungrounded, stone of tangible truth. I think tangible truth relates to Lilith really well. Can arouse the energies of Kundalini, the profound spiritual power said to lie dormant at the base of the spine stabilizing these energies within oneself, creating a slow, steady vibration. Also helps with the heart's yearnings. <clears throat> helps one in finding joy, feeling supported, finding one's needs, desires, and giving, receiving love in all forms. Strength and vitality. I think garnet kind of speaks to itself. I think it's a deeply sexual crystal. Um, uh, that kind of, for some reason, when they are deeply, deeply sexual crystals, uh, like blood in the in the blood in the in the bones in the <sighs> fire in your loins type, I think they don't tend to mention this in books. It's like it's like sidestep that issue. Then it's a deeply sexy crystal. So you know. I know who it's for, or know that, so it doesn't work, you know. But if you don't know about Garnet, I suggest, you know, go find out. Because it's wonderful. It's one of my favourites. So the next one is Rainbow Obsidian. I'm hoping it's going to be... Uh -huh.
Now is it gold or sheen or is it rainbow? It might be gold sheen actually. They've differentiated here. I don't know if I've ever seen them do that before. Okay, so we don't actually uh, carry on with them. Um, we go back down again to uh, solar plexus. <coughs> Wait. Yeah. Okay, so I, this has a gold chain uh, obsidian. Useful in helping bringing one's hidden talents to the fore. It can aid in achieving worldly success in the expression of those talents. Especially when they are directly expressed without compromising them or adapting them to the demands of outer situations. I think that aligns with Lilith perfectly. I want to do the whole mwah thing because that just aligns with her energy so so well. Helping in finding one's true calling. Assists in clearing issues of the will. It's an excellent stone for victims of abuse who wish to clear all aspects of power abuse from their energetic systems. It's a power stone for exposing ego motivations and assisting one in realigning one's power and action with the divine will. So that's that. And then the final one is the Midnight Moonstone or the Dark Moonstone. I've got a feeling that the, the, the description in here is quite small from Midnight Moonstone, but uh, yeah. Perceiving the veil, a powerful stone for the clairvoyant, the shaman, assisting one in moving into the unseen realms, the new moonstone, the mysterious, the powerful energies where all things exist as potential. It's a powerful magnifier of intention and can assist in bringing forth creations from the void. It can also um, help one to connect to dark goddesses as far as I'm concerned um, because it's a goddess crystal for the new moon. So uh, there you go, that's a, that's a midnight moonstone right there. You see the little blue sheen? I hope you can see the little blue sheen. Oh look, you can see the gold sheen on the obsidian there. That's nice. Yay. See, they are different. <coughs> right, so that is that. I think I've covered everything. I hope you like them and many blessings.